Chris, do you want to see my perfect omelet? I heard there was a crack. Shut up. <laughs> Guys, this video is all about eggs. One egg, four ways. First I'm gonna poach it, then I'm gonna fry it, then I'm gonna scramble it, then I'm gonna make an omelet out of it. The same egg all the way through, it's magic. No, it'll be different eggs. First of all, let's talk about an egg. We use large eggs in the Bon Appetit test kitchen. I prefer an organic egg. A pastured egg is probably these days considered the most eco, beautiful, happiest chicken kind of an egg. If you do one thing, just buy a fresh, large egg. Rules for poaching an egg. You have your large egg, fridge cold, pan of water. A lot of recipes are gonna tell you that into this water or somewhere involved, you need vinegar. I'm gonna tell you no. So the two things that you need to remember about the letter V are vinegar no and vortex yes, okay? Vinegar helps the egg white coagulate, which is why a lot of recipes say to put it into the water or to put the egg in the vinegar. In my experience, when you put in enough vinegar for it to actually have an effect on coagulating the white, you taste the vinegar. So I experimented and this method works great. It is a pan of barely simmering water. And with this spoon, very scientifically, I'm making a vortex. And then into there goes the egg. Two minutes, 30 seconds. You need to be precise with the cooking of the egg. A very small amount of time can make a very big amount of difference. Flip it over a couple of times. You just want to have the white sort of wrapping around the yolk as much as possible. Double check your egg. Just pull it out of the water. What you want to see is that the white is set, but not super hard. It still looks luscious. And you can actually just press on the yolk and make sure that it has some give to it. That means it's still going to be runny. Um, this to me looks slightly translucent over the top of the yolk, so I'm going to give them a couple more spins. All right, so I'm going right on to a buttered English muffin, which is my favorite way to enjoy a poached egg. Sometimes I make poached eggs for breakfast for my 14-year-old son, and people say, oh, you're insane, you're crazy, or one of those crazy food magazine people that makes poached eggs. It takes two and a half minutes. It's like, why wouldn't you poach an egg? Water, egg, ooh. Perfect. Do you want to fry an egg right now? Let's, let's fry an egg right now. Let's fry an egg. I like to fry an egg so that it has a lot of crunchy texture. And I also like to eat eggs for dinner. And I like to eat them with greens. So before I even make my egg, I'm gonna make some greens. Um, the first thing is Swiss chard stems. And it's kind of amazing the amount of greens that you need for a portion. And this is gonna be the bed for my crispy fried egg. And now the pan's already heated up. I'm also putting enough oil to completely coat the bottom of the pan. And that's key, and it's gonna seem like a lot, and I can already hear about it, but um, most of it's gonna stay in the pan. Nothing's gonna stick, it's gonna add a lot of flavor, and you will see, towards the end, I need an excess of oil to make sure that the white is cooked. I like to crack my eggs right on the surface of a flat surface, because when it shatters, it doesn't push egg inside of the shell the way cracking on the edge of a bowl, you know, pushes the egg in. So I always smack it on a flat surface. So right away, a lot of puffing, a lot of snapping and crackling, and I already have some brown edges, and that's what I'm going for. So this hot oil, which there's a little extra of, I'm just gonna spoon onto the white of the egg and I'm trying to avoid the yolk. Look, it's so dramatic and puffy and crispy and lacy, but it's not overcooked. And that should take less than two minutes and it's done. If you were to try to do this with butter and you didn't have olive oil, because the heat in the pan is getting up so high, the butter would absolutely burn, blacken, char. It would be a smoky mess. It would not taste good at all. I'm gonna have another bite. This is very delicious. All right, we're making scrambled eggs. I am making scrambled eggs. I think a good rule of thumb, unless you have a, tr a like hungry man breakfast that you need to put together, is two eggs for one person. Two eggs smacked on the surface, cracked in. You're not adding milk or cream or sour cream or stuff 
to the uncooked egg mixture. You can add stuff later, but to go into the pan, it's just the eggs. And what you're going for with the scrambling is a completely homogenous mixture. Egg whites and egg yolks cook at different rates. So in order for them to cook together into something that is really luscious and really silky and really dense and velvety, they need to be well combined. There's a little bit of um, air getting beaten into these, but I'm trying not to beat in a ton of air because if it's a very airy, and this is true for omelets too, you'll get more of a, of a spongy texture and less of a dense and silky texture. I always put a little bit of salt into my eggs before I start cooking them, but like right before. If you do it far, too far ahead, something weird happens and they get this kind of glassy thin look to them. So just salt them and then go in. So the best medium for scrambled eggs in my book is um, butter. Just nice butter, make sure it's fresh. And this time I am using the nonstick pan. I'm not looking for a big sizzle. I'm not looking for a big heat, like seizing up thing when these go in. It's very gentle. We're being gentle to ourselves. We're being gentle to the egg, gently melting the butter. So as soon as this foam kind of dies down, my pretty eggs are gonna go in. And what I'm going for in this technique is very silky, soft, large curd scrambled eggs. There's another style of scrambled eggs where it's a very small curd and it's almost creamy. It almost looks like cottage cheese. That's not what I'm going for. I'm stirring around, I'm scraping the sides, I'm sort of pushing the egg back and forth along the bottom of the pan, and then I'm waiting again. In between stirring, I'm just kind of letting it go, keeping an eye on it, listening to hear any kind of fat bubbling around the side, which would be an indication that it was hot, and watching the egg set up. It should look just a little bit still wet on the top. It's gonna stop. I'm gonna put a little bit of cilantro. You could put ricotta in these. You could put parm, that would be really nice. This is the texture egg that I would like inside of a breakfast burrito. That would be pretty ideal. So scrambling an egg is so easy, my child can do it. The next thing I'm gonna do is a perfect French omelet, which is so difficult to do that maybe I myself will not be able to do it, but it will be fun to watch. You're gonna recognize the beginning of this omelet making from scrambled egg making because they start the same way. You want a very homogenous mixture of the white and the yolk. So unlike a frittata, a French omelet should have no color on it, perfectly golden, absolutely no browning going on, no drying out, creamy. Chris Morocco knows so much about this. Bevas, right, bevas means dog drool. It literally means dog drool. And that's how the center of your omelet should be, drooly. Frankly, I'm feeling a little bit of anxiety, I'm not gonna lie. Tablespoon of butter, medium heat, lovely, not too frothy, but completely homogenous couple of eggs. With my patented rubbing my belly and patting my head at the same time maneuver, stirring, scraping, and then a couple of taps. Just get settled. Settle down. All right, so I'm gonna take about an ounce of borsan or any other melty cheese. And now I'm going to attempt to roll over. Ha <laughs> ha, is it very good? I don't know what accent that was. That was like French and like weird guy on the street, you know? I'm going to roll over. Mm hmm. <laughs> well. <laughs> Bon. All right, this is one of those things. If I were to go on QVC right now and they had an omelet turner over, I would buy it. I'm very humbled right now. All right, let's just do it. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm not gonna beat myself up too much. It's pale yellow. It has no color. It's shiny AF. It has a little crack in it, but into the crack, I put the chives. No one knows. Hereby concludes egg four ways. And if you count the four times I had to do the poached eggs and the four omelets that I made, Take five. then that's like eggs 10 or 11 ways. So all of the ways, there's eggs in the morning, 
there's easy eggs, there's eggs that children should do, there's eggs that only people who are born in France should do, and we've done them all. And now you can do them all, and you can show us how it goes, and tell us everything I did wrong, and uh, you know, put an egg on it. No, that's gross. Ta-da! Merci.